Here's my collection of braids, something I came across through the Puzzle Fraternity ooh, 20 years ago or so. It's a nice little activity for long winter evenings because there's something very clever about it, the bit of topology, which I found fascinating. You start off just with a piece of leather. And I'll show the picture of this one here, which is actually a, a, from a, a Czech com company. And you start off with, the, with those pieces of leather, not braided like that, but all just forming strips, which I'll get this, I'll undo this other one, show it what it looks like. And by clever bit of manipulation, you can get it into that wonderful braid where none of the pieces actually is twisted. They all stay upright, as it were, up uh, the top level. What I mean by that is, if you've got this one here, which I made many years ago, it's got very different colours back and front. Now, if you misbraid it and don't do it right, you see some of the lighter colours in the front, and they shouldn't be there. That's because one of the pieces has been twisted, and it shouldn't. You can twist them, provided you then untwist it and get it back again. So, there's a lot of fun in this. I'll just have, first of all, by take this one here, the check one, and show that if I unbraid it, what you have to do at a certain time is do a bit of that. You have to take it through there, and you have to take it through there, and take it through there, and take it through there, and we're almost back to start. It's much easier to undo, to be honest, than to do it up. That's just one more to do, I think. That's nearly there, and just about... Oh, I think it's done. No, no. It's got a twist to it. It shouldn't. Oh, no, it's because it's about the final one. There we are. So that's how it begins, exactly like that three separated pieces, but the ends, you notice, are joined. There's a good inch of untouched leather, uncut leather at the top. And the idea is to braid it. It's not so easy to see the back and front with this one. You just have to... Well, yes, the back is a little bit furry, I suppose you could say it, but it's not marked. But the idea is to twist them, and in this case, you have to repeat it about four or five times, because you've got a long length to do it in. So you, it, the way it starts, incidentally, is, is just by doing what they call a crossover like that. The shirt to the front. Oops, there's a, I do a crossover like that, and then I do a crossover like that, under, under, over, over, under, like that, and then a crossover like that. I think at that point you break off and do one of those tri trips like that. I think it's something like that. And you have to repeat that quite a number of times in a very specific order, otherwise disaster. You get all tangled up. Well, it does appear in books or not, but you certainly get knotted up. Here's a very ambitious one I did, my favourite one actually. This is um, a slightly elasticated little wristband that you put round your wrist. And this one had five, well I cut it into five, I thought I'd be ambitious. Um, and it worked beautifully, look at that. Although again, you can't quite tell you because it's, the colours are the same back and front, but if I look carefully, I notice, no, I've done it properly. None of those are actually w t twisted within each other. They all stay the same. So that's one of my favourites. This is a, a much easier one to do, but it's a bit tough. Both those are just a single one of it, but it needs a bit of careful manipulation, a bit of pushing and pulling in order to get it to perform. It's tricky. Why are threes or why fives? What about twos and fours? Well, it turns out, <coughs> due to the laws of physics, or I don't know what it is, some, something in the laws of topology, I think, says you can't do this with four or the even number of things unless you have an open end. So I thought I'd have a go and just to prove to myself it says. This is a four piece braid. And I found when, I, when I've got this, this end is closed, but it's actually all open to the air. There's, there's, there's no separation there. They're not fixed, rather. So I fixed it like that, kept that on it, had a go at trying to make the braid and didn't succeed. Took this off, did a nice little braiding exercise, making sure I didn't twist them, put this back on again, and then see if I could restore it to that condition like that. Oh, well, I've already twisted it up. And the answer was I couldn't as much as I tried. So I tried coming from both ends, tried to twist that into a proper bladed plait and that didn't work and then or plait and then trying to untwist it when I put them in it just doesn't work interesting so if you get a piece of um, leather like that from the leather shop my local one gives that sort of scrap to me for free cut that off and cut that bit off and then make sure you keep a nice margin at each end of about a quarter of an inch make two cuts to make three equal strips of leather and then get braiding it's a lot of fun Incidentally, this does occur sometimes in the medical world. I never heard of a anterior cruciate ligament, but this is a, a little note in the Times about 20 years ago, saying that the uh, surgeon had had to do, use a four-strand plate, plate plat, 
four sand plaque like that, but it was using the ligaments. And this was a little article showing them doing it. And it, and that's apparently in the knee joint, that. So that's a four strand plaque, and that's p possible only by having one of the ends open. You can't do it with two closed ends. So they would have had to cut right through all the strings at one end and then re reseal them or heal them or stitch them and let nature heal it. Very interesting. So there's a lot going on for this activity of plating and, and plaiting and weaving and I do recommend it as a as an activity. It's a, it's it's quite fascinating and quite fun and you can certainly have a go if you like at the impossible one and see what you can do with that one there. Yes. Try not to get knotted though. <laughs>